Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles, a ministry without walls or boundaries. And this is the word for the week. Well, the word for this week is believe. What do you believe in? What, what do you actually believe in? Well, we're going to look at what the scripture says about that. And we're going to look at a scripture that we talked about either last week or the week before. And it's John 3, 16 and 17. In fact, 3, 16 through 18. And let's see what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My question is today, do you believe in him? Do I believe in him? Do we really believe that Jesus Christ is alive and well and sitting at the right hand of the Father? Well, that's what this is all about. What do we really believe? It goes on to say, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now listen to verse 18. He who believes is not condemned. He who believes is not condemned. So if I believe in him, I'm not condemned. If I don't believe in him, I'm condemned already. It says this, But who does not believe is condemned already, because they've not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So if I don't believe in Jesus Christ, if I don't spend time with him, if he's not my Lord and Savior, then I'm lost. That's what the Bible says. Here's another thing. So it's all about belief. Statistics show us that only 24% of Americans today believe the Bible is the literal word of God and take it literally. That means 76% of Americans today do not even believe in the word of God. Well, my question is now to this point, is, do I believe? Do you believe? That's what it's all about. What do we really believe? It's easy to say we believe in something. I believe in my vehicle I can get in and drive. I believe in my wife Julie, who I can see, touch, feel, talk to. What do we really believe in? Today our society is a society that believes in everything except God, except our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, let's look at something else. Now, uh, the Bible also talks about in John 14, 1 through 6. This is one of my very favorite chapters in the Bible. John, and this is one of my very favorite verses. I want you to listen to this. Let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus is speaking. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me, he's saying. That's Jesus. He goes on to say, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am you may be also. Doesn't say you will be. It says you may be. That depends on the decision you make, whether you believe in him or not. If you believe in him, and have surrendered your life to him, then you will be. If you do not believe in him, and have not surrendered your life to him, you will not be. He goes on to say, and where I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas was like, many people in America today, Thomas said, I don't know where you're going. How am I going to know the way? And Jesus made the most powerful statement, I believe, in the whole Bible, where he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. Well, why do we need to go to the Father? Because if we don't go to the Father, and we don't go through Jesus Christ, we don't get to heaven. That's the bottom line. You know, I'm doing this in my office right now. And when I came in my office, I had to go through that door right there. There's only one way into my office. 
and there was only one way out of my office, and that's that door right there. Well, just imagine something for a minute. Imagine God was in this room, and the only place God was was in this room. And the only way I could get to God, and the only way I could get to God himself is through that door. Well, Jesus Christ is the door. He, that door is the only way into my room. That door, Jesus Christ, is the only way to God. Let's look at another scripture. Uh, John 14, 12 through 15. And listen to what he says. This is one of my very favorite verses in the Bible because I've used this many times. He said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, that goes that word believe again, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, do we really believe that? Greater things than he did, we're going to see. Well, he made the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the mute to talk. He raised men and women from the dead. And he said that we would do greater things than these if we believe. Do you believe that? If you believe that, let me ask you a question. Years ago, November 9, 1986, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ in a church that believed this. That believed this word and stood on it. And I saw a miracle after a miracle after a miracle. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I never will remember, so forget this. About two months after I was in that church, I accepted Christ in that church. And about two months later, I walked in that church one morning to go to church on a Sunday morning. And back in those days, on the platform, the pastor had a chair and a tab little table beside it and a telephone. And in case during the service there was an emergency call or something, that telephone would ring. Well, I went in this Sunday morning and, and the pastor was sitting up there and he gets up to start the message and he says, we're going to do something different this morning. He said, I just got back from St. Louis yesterday and I went down to visit and he told, told this lady's name and he said, she is full of cancer. They cut her open, she's full of cancer. They sewed her back up and said, we're sending her home to die. And he said, I don't believe in that. And he said, we're going to do something different this morning. He said, right now I want everybody in the audience to stand up. So everybody stood up. He said, I want everybody to put your hands forward right now. And everybody did. He said, we're going to call St. Louis right now. We're going to call the hospital. We're going to call her room. And we're going to pray for her and believe that she's healed. I couldn't believe this. He picks up the phone calls St. Louis, calls the hospital, gets her room, and said, we're going to pray for you. The whole congregation right now has got their hands forward, they're in agreement with me, and we're going to pray for you. And they prayed for that lady. Now this was my second or third Sunday in that church, and I thought, this is a little different. I don't know about this. Never thought much about it. About four or five months later, I went in that church service, and it was full, and there was only a couple of seats at the back. And I went and sat down in one of these seats, and I turned and looked over, and there was that woman. I thought, wow. Of course, this was only a couple of months later. Time went on, and time went on, and Julie and I moved to another church where we were ministering at. And so it was, about several years went by. In fact, quite a few years went by. And I remember Pastor Amsler, it was his 30th anniversary in ministry. And the, the, uh, the, the, everybody was coming to that service. They had a big service for him. And the uh, mayor of the city of Quincy was going to present him with a, a key to the city after 30 years. And so, again, I wanted to go see that. And I walked in the church and I was late again. 
And again, there was only one seat at the back. I went and sat down. Now we're talking about 15, 20, 30 years later, or 20 maybe, 15 years later, because this was his 30th anniversary. But it's about 15 years later anyhow. I walk in and I sat down, and there's that lady. You see, when Jesus said, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. But the Father may be glorified and said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Do we really believe it? Well, Pastor Amsler believed it, and that lady believed it, and she was still there. And so the question is, what do we really believe? And this week, I want you to think about the word for the week. I want you to think about what do we really believe? Now, 1 John says this, or John, I'm sorry, John 1, 1 through 5 says this. In the beginning was the Word, that's the Bible. Where's my Bible, by the way? That's the Bible, right here. In the beginning was the Word. This is the Word of God, this is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, meaning person, Jesus Christ, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him is life, and the life is the light of the men, of light of men. And the life shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This is the light of the world right here. This is the most powerful thing in the world. I don't know if you knew that or not, but the Bible also says that. Listen to what it says about this right here. The Word of the Living God, Jesus Christ. It says this in Hebrews 4, 12, and 13. For the Word of God, that's right here, is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit, and the joint and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him who we must give an account. This right here is the most powerful thing in the universe. The question is, do you believe in it? This is Jesus Christ himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God wrote this book for us to tell us how to make it through life. It's all the things that he tells us that if we do these, we will be successful. Do we believe it? You see, the sad part is, today most people don't believe the Word of God. The question for you and I today, me just as well as you, do we really believe it? When we get up in the morning and we're reading it and studying it, oh, by the way, it says study to show yourself approved. Not just read. Study to show yourself approved. When we get up in the morning, we need to study this book because it's alive. It's well. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. This is my life. And without this, you know, I have to drink water to stay alive. But I also have to read this to stay alive. So I want to encourage you today. If you are short on belief, if you don't believe anymore, I want you to pick up the phone and call us at 217-617-5577. And we will be here to minister to you. And with the coronavirus today, so many people are locked in their houses. They can't go anywhere. They can't do anything. And they really don't know what to believe. I was in a doctor's office the other day, and before I left, the doctor said, I want to ask you something. He said, when do you think this thing will be over? And I said, you know, I don't think anybody knows that answer. And he looked at me and he said, I think you're right. But I believe this, that Jesus Christ is here in the room with me. He's here to take care of me. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. So what we need to do is no matter what we go through, no matter how long this goes on, no matter who gets elected in November, we've got to remember one thing. 
right here is the only thing that's going to keep me sane. This is the only thing that's going to take me through this crisis we're going through today. Let me pray with you for a minute. Father, I pray for every individual watching this right now. I pray, God, that you will help our unbelief because everybody, once in a while, struggles with unbelief. I want you to remember, whatever you're going through, Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified the Son. Jesus, thank you for that promise. And right now, we ask that you be with each and every person listening to this. When they go through a struggle, have them turn to you, and then Jesus, we ask you to lead them through, because you said you'd never leave us or forsake us. Amen. Thank you for tuning in this week to the Word for the Week. God bless you.